colleague, uh, Dr. Joanna Ricard, uh, who's going to be moderating um, the next session with uh, Dala uh, Didroff. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you very much, Bruce. Uh, and uh, it's a pleasure to, to be here moderating the session. So this is our last session. We already have uh, uh, some delay in our agenda, so I'm not gonna take a lot of time. Uh, we're going to discuss practitioner tool, um, tools for dealing uh, with, for harnessing the power of identity. Uh, specifically, uh, Dr. Darla Diadoff is going to discuss harnessing intercultural competencies for peace building. She's the UNESCO Chair of Intercultural Competences at Stellenbosch University and Executive Director for the Association of International Education Administrators. Uh, she's got a, a huge uh, track record working on cross-cultural education training, both as a scholar and a practitioner. Uh, I think um, nobody uh, uh, dispenses uh, any type of introduction, but she, she kind of does. Uh, she's got several books on development of intercultural competences in educational environments and uh, more than 20 years of uh, practice, practice uh, work on applying those tools. So uh, with no longer, uh, with no further delays, I'm going to pass the word to her. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Dalla, for being here and for talking to us today. Thank you so much for the invitation to be with you. And um, I have very much enjoyed the presentations and, and have been learning a lot. Uh, so thank you again so much. So yes, I'm excited to share with you uh, a bit about looking at the intersections of intercultural competence and peace building. And in particular, to share with you a tool um, that UNESCO has been using around the world called UNESCO Story Circles. And um, so I think I'll just um, speak with you a bit about this uh, process and, um, and then welcome your comments or questions and uh, if we have time. So um, as you heard that the UNESCO Chair of Intercultural Competence at Stellenbosch, we're, we're specifically looking at um, the intersections of intercultural competence with peace building, with gender equality and uh, with climate action. And we've been doing a project together with UNESCO on looking at um, expert consultations uh, in different regions around the world on the intersections of intercultural competence and peace building, which has actually not been examined nearly to the extent that it needs to. Intercultural competence is a, a topic that I've been working on for over the last decade. And essentially uh, the question is, is really to look at what is necessary for us to get along together as humans. In the end, that's what intercultural competence is all about. What is necessary for us to get along together as humans? And that has resulted in an intercultural competence framework um, and looking at some of the basic pieces of that framework having to do with, with respect, with um, being able to see from different perspectives, with listening. And um, we use that framework as a basis for the UNESCO story circles and essentially the, the story circles um, came about because UNESCO had been working on this topic of intercultural competence for quite a number of years and wanted to, to they heard from member states at least, that it, they wanted to, to see if there could be a tool that could be developed, um, that could be used with any group of people anywhere in the world using little to no resources and that could be facilitated really by anyone, not necessarily someone with special degree or training in intercultural communication. And so we began to look at different existing tools and none of those really fit the criteria that UNESCO was looking for. And we did a series of interviews and focus groups around the world and what emerged were two things. The first is the sharing of our personal life experiences and sharing those through stories, through circles in which we share those stories. So that's how story circles came about. And we, we it's important to recognize that stories 
and circles have existed, obviously, since the the start of, of, of humans. Um, and in particularly, the circles have existed in indigenous traditions around the world for centuries. This is the first time that circles are being used for the purpose of explicitly practicing key intercultural competencies. Um, and, and we recognize that circles are used in many different ways in societies around the world. But this is the first time that we're, we're looking at using circles for developing key intercultural competencies, competencies, particularly as an opportunity to demonstrate respect for others, especially those that we might not feel like we have much in common with. Second is an opportunity to practice listening, but not just any kind of listening. It's about practicing this listening for understanding. Because as humans, we typically listen usually for response or for judgment. And when we do, the focus is often more on ourselves than the other person. How will I respond to you? What is my opinion of what you're saying? But in listening for understanding, we focus 100% on the person speaking, on the words they are saying, on how they are saying those words, and the nonverbal communication, which is a very important part of the message. It's also an opportunity to cultivate curiosity about our neighbors, about others. It's a way of increasing our own cultural self-awareness, of developing empathy, which is a key part of intercultural competence, and ultimately in building relationships, deeper relationships with each other. So those are the goals, the purpose of these UNESCO story circles. Now, storytelling, of course, also certainly existed um, and has been talked about today, existed for, for as long as humans have been around. But in this case, this is not storytelling for performative purposes. This is about sharing of one's own life experience. And that's a, a very important distinction to make. And these stories, these personal life experiences are shared through a structured yet adaptable protocol. And that, that structured protocol is outlined in an open access um, manual that's available for download online. This is called Manual for Developing Intercultural Competency Story Circles. You can see that very easily. Um, and it's available in over six different languages. And the, the protocol is outlined in that manual. It follows three rounds. Um, the first two rounds being sharing of one's own life experience. And the third round being one of affirmation. Um, and, and that has been a very transformative experience for many. And in fact, one person uh, who participated in these story circles said it's the first time in his life that he had ever felt heard. And so this can be an incredibly empowering experience to, to go through um, a UNESCO story circle experience. It takes about 90 minutes to run a, a UNESCO story circle. And the outcomes that we see from that amount of time, 90 minutes in a, in a story circle, far exceed the outcomes that we see in a half to full day intercultural training. These UNESCO story circles have been done both in person, pre-pandemic, we were able to pilot these UNESCO story circles in all five UNESCO regions around the world, including in Harare, Zimbabwe. Um, and then with the pandemic, we were really glad to be able to take these story circles online and to run them virtually uh, through Zoom. And since then, the story circles have been used to train United Nations staff, UNHCR staff, peacekeepers in Mali. Um, they've just been used in so many different ways with healthcare professionals, um, with educators, with students, uh, both in formal learning settings and in non-formal learning settings. Um, and, and we've been very pleased with the, the outcomes and the results of, of, of what happens 
for those who participate in UNESCO Story Circles. And similar to the film that we experienced here today, the power is in the fact that it impacts not just the head, but the heart. And it connects participants so deeply through emotion in the sharing of their own life experiences. Um, UNESCO would like for, for this methodology, this intercultural methodology to be used widely. As UNESCO chair on intercultural conferences, as the chairholder, we will be um, using and taking UNESCO story circles out across uh, South Africa and the continent. Uh, we've already done several um, train the trainer um, events within South Africa. Uh, and we're looking forward to, to working with colleagues and with our, our African partners and others across the continent to, to continue to train facilitators of story circles. Um, some of the lessons that we've learned in, in, in running these UNESCO story circles, uh, and the participants have told us that they have learned, is, is the importance of seeking first to understand, which is a, a cornerstone to peace building, connecting, that we can connect deeply through each other's stories, uh, they've talked about the aha moments of practicing listening for understanding, which we don't do enough of as humans. Uh, the importance of assuming positive intent as we listen to each other's stories and, and entering into these interactions with respect and cultural humility, recognizing that we don't know all that there needs to be known about each other. And there's so much more to learn. And these UNESCO story circles become one way of doing that. So those are that's a brief introduction to UNESCO story circles. Uh, I want to uh, end by extending to you an invitation to join one of the UNESCO chair's partners, where you uh, and that is uh, the partner is World Council on Intercultural and Global Competence. It's free to join, and in the World Council are a large number of um, of facilitators of UNESCO story circles. And there's a special forum there uh, where facilitators can connect with each other as they take this methodology and use it in various contexts around the world. I also wanna uh, mention that uh, UNESCO also has a number of different excellent resources on UNESCO story circles, including a, a practitioner community there for those who are trained officially um, through UNESCO. To join the World Council, uh, you would go to iccglobal.org and just complete the brief online form to receive an invitation link to World Council's workplace. And there you'll find the many other facilitators of UNESCO story circles. I also invite you to connect with me through LinkedIn and I can put my email address in the chat as well. Uh, but it's we're, we're super excited to be able to continue working with colleagues and with partners um, across the continent and around the world and bringing UNESCO story circles um, into communities um, and, and, um, and, and as a step in the peace building process and a step toward bridging divides and in the end, embracing our shared humanity together. Thank you so much, and it's an honor to be here with you. Thank you very much, Dala, for the uh, very inspiring presentation. And uh, uh, I guess uh, everybody is very much interested in, in getting to know more about the, uh, the, the story circles. Uh, at this point, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time to discussions, but uh, I'm really, really glad that you suggested uh, sending over your email and connecting with you through LinkedIn so people can uh, continue this conversation because this is obviously a conversation, shouldn't stop here. Uh, please, everybody, uh, pay attention that uh, Darla has just sent off her email uh, in, the, in the chat. And also we have in the chat the open access uh, book in which uh, she gives the whole protocol of the story circle. Uh, you can also access this. Uh, so I am handing over now to, to Bruce uh, so that we can uh, finish the wrap-up session of this day. Thank you very much, Dala, for participating and for everything you shared with us.